Ma. That's how are you in Cantonese? Some dishes not only have aroma, they also have sounds. Today, we're going to give you the aroma and sounds of some of the sizzling dishes from Sichuan. We have seafood medley over sizzling rice and steam whole spice chicken. So let's get started. <laughs> now for this the first dish, everybody can do it and I'm quite sure most of you have probably ordered this in a Sichuan, Hunan or Mandarin style restaurant. They sometimes call singing rice, sometimes it's called sizzling rice. This particular dish, all you really need is 12 pieces of a rice crust, dry, dehydrated. You can make it yourself. It's very easy to make. I will show you how to make it. And here, I have some green onion. I have two. I only have to use two to three of this whole green onion. I also have one, two, one to two pieces, approximately half a pound of lean pork. You can use beef. You can use chicken. And also have a couple pieces of mushroom. And also, I have some shrimp. This I call prawn because it's bigger than shrimp. Shrimps are small, this is medium. And I also have some bamboo shoot, Chinese black mushroom, or called shiitake mushroom in Japanese. And also, I have some seasoning here. This is a sauce. I have one and a half cup of broth. And I also have two tablespoons of soy sauce, one teaspoon of sesame seed oil, and also I have one teaspoon of chili oil. This is basically all you need. And if you want, towards the end, you can also thicken it up with a tiny bit of cornstarch solution. Okay. Now I'm going to put this here so we can get started. Start with the pork. You slice it. Now, since we have a thousand people in the audience, <laughs> so we are going to slice it up so we can feed thousands of people. I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> How's it come from the airport? This is my brother, Michael. I don't know what's happening. Just stop here. Thank you. <laughs> now. It's true that Michael just got him from the airport. I just went over there and picked him up. It's my baby brother. <laughs> and I don't know why I call him baby brother. He's about five inches taller than I am. <laughs> you have high heel shoes on? Nothing. Look, look at this. Since you're here, I'm going to ask you to give me a hand to do this particular sizzling rice. Here is a piece. <laughs> and I'm going to give you half a piece. And I'm going to ask you to go to work because we have a lot of people to feed. Now let us start to slice this up into thin slices like this. Slice. When you slice, this is what you call parallel cutting technique. Okay. You put the cleaver parallel to your cutting board. And when you are slicing it, you slice it in an angle, not towards your finger but slightly towards the cutting board. If you do it like that, I do not guarantee <laughs> whatever will happen. Let me see how well you're doing, Michael. I didn't know that you, cannot, you can cook. Wow, look at this. I am amazed. Let us do it. This is a family, family egg here. We cut it up, put it together, and then, see the way of doing this is to save time. You can stack them all up like this. Stack them all up. Michael, you can do that too. Cut it into little shreds. Stack them all up. Let's stack them all up. Now the idea, let me show you why we do parallel cutting. When you do parallel cutting for half a pound of <laughs> pork. You can cut into 65, 100 pieces and feed an army, except they all go hungry within half an hour. We'll cut it up, cut it up, cut it up, cut it up, cut it up. 
Or you can do it together like Michael does. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, oh, hell, all done. No big deal. <laughs> oh, almost just as fast. Amazing. Michael, you amaze me. Now, we'll put it here. Let's put this, Michael, let's put this over here. And then we're going to cut up some of these. I have two, you have two. Actually, since you're so fat, you can have three. <laughs> so much fun! Now, since we're so fast, we have so much time. Let us do some more. Besides, this way, we can feed more people. You're going to have two. I have one. <laughs> Pay attention. OK, this is nice. And then let's set it here and get another plate to put it here. Yeah, I got it here, Michael. Okay. Michael has never worked in my kitchen, so he sometimes get lost. Now, the next thing I want to show you is we're going to cut up some bamboo shoot and mushroom. See? This is what you call seafood medley over sizzling rice. This is seafood bamboo shoot. We're cutting bamboo shoot. Okay. Bamboo shoot. Let's put it right here. Mushroom. Let's put those here so we have everything. Now, when this is all nice and done, oh, we also have to cut up a tiny bit of these. You have one, I have one. Put them all together. We can cut it all together and put it right here so we have all this ingredient ready. And let's get the sauce ready. We're going to stir fry this dish. And we're going to deep fry the rice crust. Why? I am going to get everything ready. Michael, do me a favor to check if the oil is hot enough right here. Right here. Check the oil is hot enough. See, the way that you test whether the oil is hot enough is make sure, because you don't have to use thermometer. You don't have to use. See, Michael, I don't understand why you're so quiet. Are you nervous or what? You know, at home, when, I was, when we were growing up, Michael, talk and talk and talk and never get a chance to talk. When's now he's died on the show, right? Today, this come from the airport. So he <laughs> ran out of breath. That's the reason. Now, make sure when you do this, the most important thing, I think, is Michael taught me yesterday. How can you tell whether the oil is hot enough? You put a pair of chopsticks right here. If the oil started to bubble, OK, that means the oil is very hot. If it's nothing happened, that means the oil is not hot enough. It's very important to do that. Now, it's very, very important. Now, when this is done, Michael, why don't you deep fry deep this? Fry why? I'm going to stir fry this. So when it's done, we're going to put it right here. OK. Put the, after this is deep fried, we'll put the rice here. In the meantime, I'm going to stir fry all these things here. Now, stir fry the dish is very simple. First, you heat up the wok, and you add approximately one to two tablespoons of oil. OK. Let's stir fry the pork. Michael, can you give me the pork? You deep fry them, they puff up. Wonderful. Stir fry. Stir fry. The oil has to be nice and hot, otherwise the rice won't puff up. You see? Some people call this dish singing rice, somebody call snapping rice, somebody call crackling rice, somebody call popping rice, no matter what it is, it's delicious. <laughs> okay, stir this and stir this. When this is done, let's put it in the bowl. Put the bamboo shoot, mushroom, green onion, stir, stir. The most important thing about stir frying is when you stir this, make sure you keep on moving your wok and you move your spatula around to allow uniform cooking. 
Now also, I want to show you quickly how easy. Michael, you can handle both at the same time. You can yeah. deep fry this and stir fry this because I want to show people quickly how they can make the rice crust. Now, this is how you do it. The old fashioned way is you do it with leftover rice, okay? You have a pot, you have cooked rice, and you scoop some of the rice out. You have a little bit, a thin layer of rice crust left on the pot, okay? And then you bring it to, you know, bring it up to high and kind of brown the bottom, kind of dehydrate and dry it up, and you can use a spatula to scrape it up. But the new fashion way of doing it is you press the cooked glutinous rice on this iron, this cookie sheet, like this, cookie sheet. Press it, press it, and then bake it in the oven at low temperature, okay? If you don't have time to press it, you use one of these to press it down. It works <laughs> even better. I want to go over to the oven to take up the one that I have already done right here. Wow, this is hot. I want to show you how easy it is. Look at how wonderful. You see? Then I'll pick up one. This is how you do it. Now, when the dish is done, we'll put the rice here. We'll put all the cracked only rice here. Let's put this rice back here and put the rice here and then pull the dish, pull the sauce in your, put the sauce there, Michael. Put the sauce there. And then I want everybody listen. This is why they call sizzling rice. Oh, perfect. Perfect. Almost done. This is how you do it. Then when it's done, let's put this here. Quickly, Michael, let's put it. Sizzling crackles. Listen. Wow! Snap crackles. <laughs> like a rock band, it snaps, it crackles. Don't think she get a recording contract. <laughs> I don't know where Michael learned how to cook, but it, lives, it seems to me he is a very, very good cook. Michael. Uh, he, he told me, right, just get in the kitchen to wash the dishes. <laughs> A lot of people ask me, you use too much chicken in all your dishes. I mentioned it to somebody the other day. Well, 455 recipe doing chicken dishes. And a lot of people say, how are you going to use? How are you going to take care of the chicken? I want to show you how you can debone the whole chicken. Of course, the most important thing, particularly for beginners, you do what I do. Start with a chicken and cut up the chicken with a dotted line like this. So you never mix it up because you cut everything according to the dotted line. <laughs> this is for beginner. I started with this. But as you go along, become more efficient. Then you don't have to worry about there's an imaginary dotted line here. Now also the chicken has to be relaxed. <laughs> Stay. <laughs> Dumb cluck sit. And never. Now, it's not polite for the chicken to stand, to sit in front of everybody like this. Please be polite. <laughs> and also, you got to massage these a little bit because when the chicken is very tense, it's tough. <laughs> Are you relaxed now? <laughs> no, it's ready. Now, when it's ready, when it's ready, it's very flexible because when it's ready, you can do somersault. Hey! <laughs> Step number one. Imaginarily dotted line. 
one cut right here okay one cut right here another cut right here okay one cut along the breastbone one cut one cut then turn it to the other side one cut right in the middle where it is and also protect this most delicate portion of the chicken <laughs> very important one cut right here and then the next step you see the joint is right here you cut the joint put it here and then you can dejoint the wing hold on to the wing you push the whole thing out like this see the whole chicken breast come out amazing <laughs> and then you put this back hold on to the thigh twist these and then you can cut this little course you do not have to chop anything we'll put it right here you do it exactly the same way on this side but this time i'm going to do it a little bit faster you go like this and push it out push the whole thing out put it right here push this back hold on to this push this out you do not have to chop anything whatsoever and then the only thing left is this little piece of tenderon let's push this out and then hold on to this and the whole thing comes out like this okay and then you turn it to the other side do the same thing push this out hang on to the ligament and then you can push this out and then this is the ligament hang on to the ligament and put it over here and then trim the fat off and trim the most delicate part out save it for chicken surprise <laughs> and then put this carcass don't throw them away because this is what you use for homemade soup stock then you put it here to make homemade soup stock now the next thing I want to quickly show you is how to quickly cut this up okay take this out use a little knife or a big knife one cut along the bone okay one cut along the bone okay use these this is the thigh cut push this down a little bit one cut here and the whole thing comes out save this for home make soup stock <laughs> okay and then you do the same thing with this one cut here one cut here okay and then hold on to this is the leg you push this and the whole thing comes out like this homemade soup stock <laughs> okay and then after you finish this this whole thing is boneless you set it upside for this you cut it up right here then you have a whole chicken breast and then you have a wing see just like I normally do I'm just winging this done thing <laughs> I have wing save these for another dish save this another dish now you have the whole thing what a cut up The steam whole spice chicken is very, very interesting. Everybody can do because you can do it way ahead of time and serve it a couple days later. You start with these one whole chicken, approximately two and a half to three pounds. Gigantic fryer. And also you use about half a teaspoon to one teaspoon of salt and approximately one or two shallot chopped and also about a teaspoon of Sichuan peppercorn. Okay, and also do some ginger, shredded or minced ginger. And then you have a dipping sauce. When a chicken is steamed, you will need a dipping sauce. The dipping sauce have one quarter of a cup of soy sauce, three tablespoons of rice vinegar, and also you use two tablespoons of sesame seed oil. And you also notice that I have about one or two cloves of garlic here, and also a tiny bit of sugar and chopped ginger. You mix them all up and get that dipping sauce ready. So basically, this dish is very, very easy to do. And everybody can serve these as part of the menu. That's how we do it. We do a whole menu every day. This can be appetizer, can be a main dish, can be anything. Now, first of all, you put this chicken right over here. You can put it in like this, or you can put it in, depends on your mood, you can go <laughs> like that. You tenderize the chicken. And then you sprinkle a tiny bit of salt all over. Approximately a, a teaspoon, that's all you need. One teaspoon is exactly 16,000 grains of salt. <laughs> 
put sprinkle, and also you have some roasted peppercorn. I'm not quite sure how many have ever tried peppercorn. This is a Sichuan peppercorn. Sichuan peppercorn are wild pepper. They're not hot, but they're very pungent, very aromatic. This is what gives the Sichuan dishes all this characteristic. Let me smell it. Wow, <laughs> wonderful. Then you sprinkle this here and there, and also some shallot, okay? And let it marinate. For those who like hot and spicy food, just rub it and rub it. Let it marinate for approximately, <laughs> feels good. <laughs> rub it, rub it. Make sure to rub the whole thing. And after you rub, let it sit anywhere from two hours to overnight. Don't do it for two minutes, okay? And then you put it in this wok, and you steam it. You steam it in this wok. We've got too many woks around here. <laughs> we put this over here, and we steam this. See, when we have so many people around here, we always have to cook a lot of food, so everybody can get a chance to get it. Everybody have at least one or two or three pieces. Now, after this is ready, you're going to get ready some garnishing because you need the garnishing to make the dish looks gorgeous, you see. We have some tomato here, and we have some parsley here. Now, the most important thing is to save time. You should remember, make the dipping sauce way ahead of time. Because when you make this ahead of time, keep it in the bottle, keep it in the fridge, then you don't have to worry about doing it in the last minute. See, if you try to rush and do it in the last minute, it'll drive you crazy. So it's important when you plan a menu, make sure you do that. Now, after this is done, you steam this chicken for at least, steam it for at least half an hour to an hour, depends on whether you're using gas or using electric. If I were you, if I have electric burner at home, I would steam it for about 45 minutes. If I have, if I turn it down lower, I can even steam it for about 50 minutes, because you can steam it at a lower temperature. After steam, I have done one a little bit earlier to save time. After steam, you take it out, and then you have to hand shred these, because traditionally, you hand shred these. But sometimes you run out of time, then you can cut it. Where is my cleaver? Here, I'll just clean up for you. <laughs> ah! Michael, Michael, this is cleaner than I expected. Thank you. <laughs> now, I'm going to cut this little piece out. I'm going to cut this little piece out. I, see, Michael is very conservative. He's also very patient. See, Michael, I am going to do something. Since you are still here, you're going to give me a hand. I know that you don't have to rush to the airport in the next half an hour. Michael, why don't you hand shred this? Sao si. Sao si means hand shredded. When I was a little kid, I'm always rebellious. Broke away from, that's why Michael is the conservative one. He will do the hand shred chicken. Sao si. See this, uh, you do it by hand. It takes weeks and weeks. <laughs> Michael, I remember when we were a little kid, when we grew up, you're always mother's favorite. <laughs> no. My mom likes like him better than me. You cut it up, and then you do a garnishing. And then you put all the chicken right here, and you put everything together. You use some pineapple. This okay. is Martin's favorite recipe. This is, my, this is our mother's favorite recipe. OK, you put it right here. You put it right here. And then it will come out like a dish like this. Look at how wonderful. <laughs> Michael has to go to the airport. So we have to rush now. Remember, if Yen can cook, it's Yen can too. So can all of you. Joy game. Joy game. <laughs>